Okay. I found out we got the bad ending for Valhalla. So I'm going to go through with New Game Plus and see um, what new stuff we can see. Apparently, hitting New Game Plus, we have Anna saying, Psst. Let's see what she has to say. I'll put it back on uh, wrestling. Hey, over here. Boo. Hmm, why didn't I show up on the TV? Eggs get old if you repeat them too much, you know? But no matter, thank you for playing again. Don't worry, you won't be punished for choices made in the past playthroughs. This is a fresh new beginning. Um, almost fresh, at least. Joe will have all the money she had at the end of the last time. Oh. She'll keep everything she bought or unlocked, too. That means she can potentially be a millionaire but remain the same poor bartender. Well, suspension of disbelief exists for a reason, right? Oh, but debts will still show up, so be careful. Did you get all the endings yet? Here's a couple of tips. Leaving Joe homeless, or not, is the first step to at least one of them. There's two of them that are rely on being a top bartender to buff to the buff sweetheart and the cat eared beauty. Of those two, one needs you to be patient with the pompous buffoon. The other one needs you to serve the busty droid what she wants. The other busty girl, the blonde one, you should get hers as long as you're not an asshole. And Becky's should be easy as long as you remember what she says. Six different endings. Can you get them all? Sorry for all the chatter. Let's pretend this never happened. Game start. Okay. That's it. No more tequila seasoned ramen <laughs> before afternoon nap. What the hell were you chewing on for? Is that a letter? Chapter 1. Primera. Your membership to Shining Finger will automatically renew on the 17th. Make sure your account has at least 800 by then. Hey, I have over 10,000. Make sure you use your you save your data using Life Backup. You can now browse the augmented eye. Click to dismiss. Four, so who was the letter from? Jill. Nobody. Aw, oh, man. Things are so... Alright, cool. Augmented Eye. Mass Immigration continues. Four, would you leave? Not without you. Mass Immigration continues as Quincy reveals new economic adjustments by Kimberly Lavalette. With inflation... Oh, this is the Kim that shows up at the bar later. With inflation rates among the highest in the world, constant shortages of basic groceries, and rampant violent crime, glitch cities, citizens, look for a better life in other countries. Quincy, however, isn't happy with this. They learn in our schools and universities, the Prime Minister said during a talk with the Augmented Eye, they apply what they learn elsewhere, somewhere else, and I find it rather insulting. This comes after revealing new economic measures for the city, most of which most analysts consider to be useless for the current environment. They don't know shit, concluded Quincy. Wonderlanders are the newest threat to your security by Kimberly Lavalette. If you thought Alice Rabbit was good at cracking the most complicated security protocols in the world, then this new group will certainly blow your mind. They have yet to make an impact as big as Alice Rabbit, but they seem to be aiming very high with the recent threats and issued against Prime Minister Quincy. We still hold full access to Quincy's email network and will release the whole database this January, the group declared during a stream. Shallow threats. When questioned, Prime Minister Quincy dismissed all of the group's threats by stating he's not hiding anything and is not afraid of possible a possible leak of his email history. Maybe everyone will get to see what kind of TV I bought last month. Wild parties. The people behind Wonderlanders seem to enjoy dressing in all kinds of rabbit costumes during the stream. From Anthro to Brownie Girl, the purpose was to show the love and respect they have for Alice Rabbit and their role in today's politics. We want to follow their example while having some fun. We're not sure if this will go anywhere, but we'll be there to tell you if it does. Jill says, I wonder what Alma thinks of this whole thing. Cyborg and Heels returns next year to Super Silver Thunderdome by Lana Smithy. 
The popular show Cyborg and Heels returns to the Dome this March, with tickets going on sale in January. Cyborg, Cyborg and Heels is a massive stage show about a cyborg fighting terrorism while wearing heels. Director Quentin Hayter, is that a David Hayter reference? Explains Cyborg and Heels special appeal during an exclusive interview with Augmented Eye. Is Cyborg and Heels a reference to Raiden from Metal Gear Solid 4? What's not to love about it? It's a cyborg wearing heels, cutting stuff. That's literally something we've never seen before, a niche market I'm willing to capitalize on. Check out the full interview in the next weeks, exclusively here at the Augmented Eye. 4. His acting is unnatural. Jill says, I don't think he cares about the rules of nature anyway. <laughs> wow. Alright, let's go ahead and save. Boom. Aww. Alright, uh, back. Yeah. And let's go to work. Tuesday, December 13th. Jill says, good evening. Ah, uh, hey there, Jill. Oh, hey, John. When will you admit you have a John face, Gil? When you let people call you Jules. Quiet. Are you okay? You look distracted. Where's boss? No, she went out to buy some stuff and... Did you hear what I just told you? You said something? Yes, that you look distracted. Very, very distracted. It's nothing. I just... I'm just thinking about stuff. What stuff? Well, I have to pay rent by the 30th, which is always stressful and... Ah. There's also the fact that I spent a full hour yesterday apparently talking to myself. There she is. Not to mention the fact that... Two days ago, I found out the bar is at risk of closing. Not only is my life being shaken up, I'm apparently going crazy. On top of that, neutralizing f neutering four left me with a completely empty wallet, and I'll get evicted if I miss rent again. And there are all the beer cans around my apartment, and... Jill. Sorry, did you say something? Can you really work today? Of course I can. Let's go through the basics then, shall we, just in case. If you can make a piano man, I'll skip the rest, but beer, but bear with me for a second here, okay? Let's start with a sugar rush. Look for the rest of the blah, blah, blah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's telling me how to play. I remember this. You're happy? Yes, very. I stand corrected. Now let's get working. Oh yeah, before I forget. Hmm? You can make any drink big by doubling the amount of ingredients. But if the recipe already has over 10 ingredients, the drink is already big. Oh, and if a recipe says to use optional karmatrine, it means you can use none or fill it to the brim. Optional karmatrine doesn't count toward making a big drink, of course. Karmatrine is the alcoholic factor in a drink. It doesn't change the taste, but the amount still has an effect. If you add too much of it, the client will get drunk faster, so please be mindful of that. Are you done with the exposition? Now I am, yeah. Hey guys. Oh, hey. Who's that? I don't know, found her while I was out shopping. Why bring her here? Well, it was either leave her outside at the mercy of society's finest or bring her unconscious body in here. She's going to make such a ruckus when she wakes up, you know that. That's up for you all to deal with. I'll be in my office. You can't just push that responsibility onto us. We have work to do, damn it. There's two of you. Believe in yourselves. Hmm. Do you think Chief knocked her out? Nah, that's unlikely. She'd be crowing about it or taunting us if that were the case. It's not like her to pick on such a small girl. At least not unprovoked. Yeah, you're right. We'll just need to keep it quiet. She seems to be just sleeping soundly, not a comatose. Yeah. Okay then, time to start the night. Yes, I'll start working while you go clean the bathroom. Um, come again? 
Well, you spent the whole weekend on Monday doing God knows what. We had some interesting clients come in. Dogs. Lots of them. You're joking. Gil, you've known me for how long? Do I look like the kind of woman who would make a joke like that? Well, so, as punishment for leaving me to deal with all that on my lonesome, you'll be in charge of cleaning the bathrooms. Have fun. Just that? Fine. I see no problem. Where's the cleaning stuff? Here. You brought that from home, didn't you? That I did. Fine. That out of the way, let's play some music on the jukebox. This model seems to have all of the 12 slots filled with song before it can start. I wonder what was the logic behind that decision. Oh boy. Uh, where's my favorite tune over here? Time to mix drinks and change lives. Hey, Donovan. Hey, you get me a beer. Oh, sure, right on. Nice job. Um, thanks, I guess. You're lucky I was in a meeting close by. This hellhole could certainly use a presence of mine. Although, to be fair, work has taken me to worse hellholes, like New Jersey 3. What kind of work do you do, mister? You're talking to Donovan, the Dawson, chief advisor and owner of the Augmented Eye. Nothing gets published there without my blessings. The day started with quite the interesting fellow, it seems. So you're the one to blame for the barrage of daily articles on Alice Rabbit, then? Hey, people love those articles. They love reading about that urban legend. Can you blame them? The idea of some wildcard hacker working for their own goals and nobody else's? That's the kind of corny shit that brings the clicks from all kinds of people. And clicks bring money, and money brings nice stuff. Stuff like cars and houses and plastic surgery for the missus and her kids. Well, I'm not complaining about the fact that you write about the hacker, just that you write about them every single day. Some of it isn't even news, just speculations or copycats. I can't read your newspaper's daily feed without running into at least one article about Alice Rabbit. Well, first of all, I don't write it. My interns do. The poor bastards think it'll help make them full-time employees. I'm just capitalizing on this topic while it's popular. And second, you're tired of one article and about a supposed hacker, but not all the daily stories about murders and other horrors. Well, I always filter out that section. I don't want to start my day scared and bitter. I have enough pressure and problems as it is. I don't need to add Glitch City's lovely citizens to the list. You're smarter than you look, kid. But if more people were, lo were like you, I'd go bankrupt from lack of traffic. Still, maybe my job would be easier. How so? People get decent descends. People get bored with certain kinds of news after seeing it repeatedly. When I started in this job, it only took the news of some elderly woman being killed to guarantee clicks. Now you need an elderly woman carrying a sick baby boy getting hit by a truck. Death's not enough. They need a full sob story behind it. That's why I like those urban legends. They're easier to write about, and you can make up any shit you want. Spam them while they're hot, and then even people like you, people who avoid the murder stories, will see them. That brings money, and like I said, money's good. Hmm, I guess he has a point. What about the opinion columns? Aren't those a good source of traffic, too? Oh, I hate those brats. They're just right about how they're better than everyone else. They might also write about how everyone that likes a certain something should be sodomized. The worst part about that is how they know only... is that they know half our clicks come from them, so they get all diva-like on my ass. I think you're being too harsh. What about? No, wait. I was thinking of another newspaper. Yeah, the columnists on your page are annoying. See? The kid on the restaurant critique column, um, um, shit. Forgot that brat's name. Restaurant? I believe that's... That kid couldn't care less about his name. 
Anyway, his column is the least visited of the bunch. He gets less hits than the obituaries. However, he still insists that I keep paying for his adventures to outrageous restaurants. I wouldn't have any problem with that if he actually wrote about half of the places he visits. How so? He rarely writes about the places the newspaper sends him to. I've even heard he tries to get free meals by proclaiming that he's a food critic. Poor bastard only gets laughed at when he says that. I do remember some guy coming here asking for free drinks, saying he was a critic or whatever. Did he look like a fat child with a really small face? No. It wasn't this one, then. Anyway, all this talks made me thirsty. Give me a beer this time. Here, try to give me a beer this time, please. Coming right up. Beer again. This man likes the beers, so though they come cheaper in bulk at the store, though. One, two. One, two. Three, four. One, two. One, two. Three, four. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, all mixed. Here you go. Ah, it's the big things that make a life worthwhile. What about big troubles? Did I stutter, kid? Right. So tell me, do you see many celebrities in this hellhole? Uh, please stop referring to this place as a hellhole. If a place smells like soap and dog piss, I'm within my constitutional rights to call it a hellhole. I'm doing my best here, thank you very much. Who was that? Nobody important. Hey, I heard that! Don't be offended by what I say, kid. I'm insulting the building, not you. You can think of it as a small hole in hell rather than a hellish hole if you like. Charming. So, celebrities. Not really. At least not that I know of. Why? Well, to begin with, you have a serious VIP as a client, but I don't see you losing your shit. You're not making me feel special, honey. And second, because I'm always up for gossip regarding famous people. Especially the red carpet kind of famous. Those folks people pretend to love but actually want to see fall from grace. Pretend to love fall from grace? Why do you think that gossip about famous people always sells? People pretend that they love celebs, but what they really want is to see their idols torn down to their level. They want to see them suffer to get their comeuppance for daring to be so much more successful than them. Nah, I think gossip is just something everyone enjoys but nobody wants to admit to enjoying. You thought wrong, but even if you were right, it wouldn't change the fact that people love that kind of stuff. They want to escape their lives by living somebody else's. Sadly, I fall, I fail to see the appeal in that whole thing. What do I care if this guy I saw in some random movie was wearing socks with sandals or if they're dating God knows who? Granted, socks with sandals is practically a, a public indecency, but still. Oh, please, as a bartender, I bet you have a strong voyeuristic streak. Your kind always loves to hear that stuff. Just like hairdressers, this sounds hypocritical coming from you. Uh, even if that's the case, I don't sensationalize what people do. I don't make it more than that person you know from TV acts like a human. Sensationalize is the key word here. Just the other day, I saw this committee judge bitching over what some girl was wearing to the store. No matter what you say, these people don't exist solely to entertain the public. But this problem exists because they're the ones constantly cultivating the idea that they're perfect and untouchable. Going to exotic locales, dressing in elegant ways, indulging in every luxury they can think of. All that just leaves the public craving those little moments they make a mistake and fall to their level. Can't say that's a lie, but sometimes the crowd just wants to see they're human. Hey, that dude that plays the nice guy is indeed a really nice guy. To be fair, the gossip articles don't help, sensationalizing everything. It feels like they're investigating a behavior that shouldn't even be acknowledged in the first place. You like your big words, eh, brat? Well, two can play that game of... Hmm. Hey, you're a bartender, right? No, I'm a lab rat helping on World Conquest. Pinky in the brain reference, nice. Sarcasm, waste my time, my money, and your energy. Refrain from using it. Anyway, I just realized that a bartender like you must have heard quite a few stories in her career. Talk about changing topics. Maybe, why? Wouldn't you like a column talking about those? I bet you would sell quite well. 
It would be like that priest who published confessionary stories and then got excommunicated and lynched. People usually tell me all this stuff because they know I'm just a simple bartender. A personal stranger of sorts. We could have you ghostwriting. Half our staff do that. They do? You don't really think Lana Smithy is just one person, do you? Figures. Anyway. Eventually the people from the stories would know it's them and blame me. Not only would that hurt us as a business, it would hurt me. I really like hearing clients rant about their lives. Oh, and it would hurt the clients too, I guess. Well, if you ever retire, that offer is waiting for you. Yeah, like you'll remember me two weeks from now. Sure. Do you want another drink, Mr. Donovan? Mr. Donovan. Mr. Donovan. Did I just say something wrong? Not at all. I just really like the sound of that. Mr. Donovan. Mr. Donovan. Is it really that special? At work, everyone calls me Mr. Dawson, or boss. Boss is just a title. It's too impersonal and cold. It is. Mr. Dawson was my father and my grandfather. It's too general. But Mr. Donovan. Now, that's more like it. They're referring to me, the man in front of them. Not to my family, not to my position as boss. To me. Do you want your employees to get personal with you, Mr. Dawson? Or Mr. Donovan? Oh, gods, no. I want them to fear me. Not because I'm their boss or the name appearing in their paychecks. But rather because I strike mortal dread into them. Starting tomorrow, I'm going to make everyone call me that. Oh, yeah, you were asking something. What was it? Drink. Another one. Do you? Ah, uh, yes, yes. You know what? A third time's a charm. Give me a beer. All right. One beer. Here's hoping I don't pass out. Cheers. Enjoy. Say, kid, does this bar have any investors? He didn't call it a hellhole. There was some bloke named Sven that wanted to give us money if we stamped his face all over the place. But aside from that, no. These bars are pretty much like any fast food chain, so there are no local investors. Why? Just wanted to let you know how lucky you bastards are. Investors suck harder than my first wife's mouth. <sighs> Those bastards think they're so important because they put their money in the company. Well, that's... I mean, you give me money so you can make more. Let me do the thing and I'll give you your money. But no, they have to stick their noses and start changing the silliest of stuff. What good is it to be the boss if you still have to work for someone else? You still have to answer to the unions, the government, and those kind of organizations, don't you? Yeah, but that's paperwork. I make somebody else do it and call it a day. These losers ask for meetings. They start talking about stuff they don't like, stuff they found offensive. And there's always that one guy or gal who says, Hey, why don't you do what that other newspaper does? Recently they told me that they needed more clicks. More clicks. I make sure to keep stuff spicy while still keeping production quality up, but it's never enough for them. But you know what? They want more clicks, I'll give them more clicks. I'll show them what happens when I do what they want and don't reject ideas. They'll know who the hell Donovan D. Dawson is. Should I be worried? Nah. At least he paid before storming off. What would happen with Sven though? Never heard from him again. Jill! Yes? What the hell happened in that bathroom? That kind of mess usually requires you to have thumbs. Crafty dogs, I tell you. You'd think their short legs would hinder them. The ceiling. The sinks. The toilets. The vents. Shh. You'll wake up Briar Rose over there. I won't forget this. Yeah, yeah. Oh, a client. Welcome to Valhalla. What can I... Big gut punch. Fast. Alright. He wants a gut punch. I'm gonna give him a gut punch, alright? 
10 bronze and extra. 1, 2 flanner guide. And the rest is optional karma train. All aged and mixed. Here you go. Hmm, you can actually do it then. Hmm, this crack house is a bar. Hellhole crack house? It smells like dog urine and soap. How the hell do you expect someone to feel comfortable in here? I'm surprised you decided to come in to our little crack house at all, mister. What the hell do you care? The payment registry says, Sorry for the question then, Mr. Ingram McDougal. <laughs> Sorry about the smell. We're working on fixing it. There was an incident over the weekend. But it's Tuesday. Please, let me know if, there, if I can make your experience more pleasant regardless. If I pay you, will you come with me to a motel for a couple hours? No. Then I have no use for you beyond giving me drinks. Such pleasant clientele tonight. May I ask why you decided to come to our bar then? Somebody recommended me this place, and I have absolutely no idea why she likes it. She says a regular. She says she's a regular here and all, and I'm starting to doubt her tastes. A regular? Can I ask who? No. I'll concede one thing: whoever picks the music at least has decent taste. Hey Jill, where did you put the dish soap? Gills run out below the sink where it's always been. Right. Oh, customer. Good evening, sir. Hope you enjoy your stay at Valhalla. So, any other feedback you want to provide to the establishment so we can enhance your customer experience? No, nothing. That's an interesting change of heart. I can't afford to slander this place knowing she's here. You know my boss? I don't know her, but I know who she is. Dana Zane, the Red Comet. The woman who fended off mall rioters all by herself, knocking them out cold one by one. That's an achievement, and a title I've never heard before. I know Boss did quite a few things before opening this bar, but that sounds... Would you happen to know how she got the, her mechanical arm? I heard a couple of stories, but they sound too fantastical to be true. You've had an interesting change of heart attitude. I saw that woman take out armed rioters with her bare hands. Once you see something like that, it's hard not its hard not to keep your mouth shut in front of them. Interesting. You can relax, though. I've only seen her deal with the clients personally about two or three times. I'm oh, sorry. I read that in his voice. You can relax, though. I've only seen her deal with clients personally about two or three times. One involved Class 5 weaponry, the other one a pickup artist, and the latest had an alpaca. An alpaca? Not really an alpaca, but there's this woman that owns a textile company. She got really drunk and she started screaming she was an alpaca. She started spitting on everything afterwards. My boss had to show her the exit. I'd rather not remember that night, so let's leave it at that. Can I get you anything else? Give me a pile driver, please. Please, there's a word I haven't heard today. Coming right up. Here you go. Hmm, that's fine, I guess. Hey, lady, have you ever faked an orgasm? I'm sorry, I think I heard wrong. I asked if you ever faked an orgasm. That's a question I'm not going to answer. I'll take that as a yes. I was just thinking about how good a lie can be. I mean, even the most sincere people lie once in a while. Lies can buy you time, lies can make you happy. Real reality will come crashing through the door eventually, but for that moment, a lie can give you meaning to can give meaning to you. I say lies are like your porn stash. You know they exist, but you shouldn't acknowledge them. Does that mean you've really faked orgasms? Because you look like you have a lot of experience. Still, that's quite the random thought just to ha suddenly have. You're perhaps lying about something right now? Not really. I was just thinking about people making polite comments about this crack house. Uh, of course you were. Hey, I'm gonna need another drink here. Alrighty, don't you think you're drinking a bit quickly? That's my problem, not yours. Give me a fringe weaver. Alright, let's give him a fringe weaver.
Try not to drink it too fast. That's up to me. Hey, lady, have you ever felt empty? Empty how? Like hungry? No, I mean like, empty like there's a part of you missing. Can't say I particularly have. I just feel like this is part of myself that lacks something. In order to get or do something that I just can't satisfy. Have you tried taking up a hobby? It might not solve your problems, but it might keep you busy enough to avoid thinking about it. Any suggestions? Well, collecting stuff, reading, bungee jumping, combat sports, exercising. Sounds a lot cheaper than the alternative. Which is? Bitches and alcohol. I tried sex tourism once. It was like a bloody Russian roulette of STDs, so I left midway through. I once burned my Christmas bonus hiring three women for an orgy. Porn is more amusing and way cheaper. I also hired a girl to act like my daughter for a day for three years in a row now. Nothing seems to do it. Um, have you tried rescuing a puppy? You can't fuck puppies. At least you shouldn't. I'm drawing a blank then. I can't think of anything that might help. I wasn't expecting you to help me. Or to believe me. Eh? I could have been lying through my teeth this whole time. People lie, lady. Anyway, I'm leaving now. This smell is killing me. Please come again. Don't count on it. Good. Phew. Boss, I'm going to take my break. Alright. At least I didn't get locked up this time. Um, I like the variety. Okay, then back in action. Good evening. Good eve. Um, would you mind taking your helmet off? Oh, sorry. It's comfortable and I usually forget I have it on. Is this better? Yeah, thank you. Or, yeah, thank you. What can I get you, Miss Master Specialist Sai P. Asagiri of the 765th Division of Valkyrie Corps at your service? Wait, that's too long. Just call me Say. What can I get for you, Say? Let's see. I'm in the mood for a sweet drink. Oh, but not sweet as in cool. Although a cool drink would be nice too. Um, but not cool as in great. Uh, especially not as in big. More so since I have to get up early tomorrow and I can't afford a hangover. I'm sorry. Sorry, did you get that? A sweet drink, preferably a cold one. That's not too big, right? Yeah, that's it. I can do that. Give me a sec. Small, sweet, I see. I wonder if I have something specific. Be really happy. One powder delta, one flanner guide, two karma train. All on the rocks and blended. It's a moon blast. Here you are. Ah, yes, this is just what I needed. Thanks. We don't get many white knights as clients. I can only remember one other, in fact. You said you're from the Valkyrie Corps, right? Are you the guys who deal with riots and such? Riots? Oh, no, no, no. You're thinking the Blitzkrieg Corps. I'm the one, the ones with the huge plated suits, right? Yeah, those. No, we're from, we're different people. I mean, obviously we're different people, but we don't deal with riots or anything. In fact, you could say we deal with their aftermath. How so? To rescue, heal, and protect, we are the angels who soothe the suffering enemy attack. We are the light of hope in the darkest of times, the ones who assist the victims of crime. We watch, we protect. Um, what was that? Sorry, it's the sort of pledge of our allegiance we recite it every morning. What it means is that our duties mostly include rescuing civilians, healing the injured, and protecting them from stuff. 
What kind of stuff? Burglars, rapists, car crashes, anything that might happen on our watch. You mentioned heal. Are you a doctor then? Nah, I know many doctors, but I'm not one. I'm more of a paramedic. I treat people so they can arrive safely at a doctor. I'm also kind of like a firefighter in that I sometimes rescue people from places. Damn, that must be a tough job. Sort of, but it's also really rewarding. I mean, I've yet to meet somebody that isn't glad to see me when I arrive. You must have seen some shocking sights. Yeah, this one time I was saving some people from the top of a collapsing building. I looked down and I was blown away by how pretty the city was. It was like a starry sky on earth. Oh, and there was this time we were cleaning up the aftermath of a car crash. Water was pouring out of a hydrant. With the lights and scattered pieces of glass, it was almost dreamlike. That's not what I meant by shocking sights. No? Those sights are... And they're shocking, right? Yeah, but never mind. Wait. Did I mishear you and actually meant size? I mean, sure. I've suffered the deepest, longest, and most frustrated sighs from people after everything's said and done, but... Don't worry, you didn't miss here. I guess I just wasn't expecting... I, I guess I was just expecting a different kind of answer. What kind of answer? Don't worry too much about it. You finished your drink. Can I get you anything else? Hmm, something classy. A classy drink. Can you be more specific? Don't make it too big. Does that work? Sorry, I don't come to bars very often. My drinks usually come in a can. No problem, don't worry. A classy drink. Now let's see what I can find for you. Flaming Moy. Here you are. Yep, this looks like something Stella would drink. Who? She's my dearest friend. Not that I don't have others, but she's the one I've known the longest. She likes these kind of drinks, so I wanted to see what's so special about them. And what do you think? I was expecting something stronger. I like it quite a bit. Same as Pretender. What's your name? Hmm. You know, my name. I want to know yours. Oh, sure. Just call me Jill. Jill. Hmm. Jill. Jill is sort for Jillian? No, that's not. Jillian Ju... Julian? Do not call me Julian, please. Sorry. Oh, sorry about that. No, please. Excuse me. I didn't want to anger you. Um, but why don't you like being called by your full name? It's a stupid question. Don't dwell on that. too much on it. Oh, okay. I still feel bad about her angering you, though. Why? Because you look like a nice girl, Jill, and I don't like angering nice people. If it helps somehow, I really like this place. That actually helps. You're the first person to say something nice today. Thanks. What do you like about it? Mm, the smell of dog urine and soap. My mom used to be a veterinarian, and I used to go to her clinic after school, so the smell takes me back. It makes me feel comfy and nostalgic. What made you become a white knight instead of a veterinarian or anything else? Well, I was never good at a good student, so studying medicine of any kind was out of the question. That aside, it's mostly because of something that happened while I was a kid. A white knight attacked my friend and was coming for me when this other white knight saved us. I don't remember what happened next. I just woke up in the hospital with my friend watching over me. I mean, it wasn't a prophetic moment or anything like that, but ever since then I felt this way it was my calling. That I wanted to help people the same way they helped me. Hmm. It's an interesting thought. One would think being attacked by a white knight would make, an, make you run in the opposite direction. Yeah, but it was another one that saved me. So I kind of guide myself toward judging everything on an individual basis. Well, not to an extremist extent, but you get me. Yeah, I try to do the same too. Why join the Valkyrie Corps specifically, though? 
because I wanted to rescue people from dire situations whenever possible. And going into patrols and all that felt too tiresome. It's also the one with the least paperwork involved. Now that, I think about it. There are different kinds of white knights, right? I guess white knight is too broad a term. There is not one specific type. There are many different classes. Rescue? Assault? There's even a squad full of bureaucrats. Really? Yeah, they get assigned to companies to handle accounting and that kind of stuff. People usually ask for them because they speed up processes. But if you are assigned when a company is suspected of having weird under the table deals. Interesting. There was also a squad dedicated to fighting school bullying. They were doing a nice job, but the fad of anti bullying campaigns passed and they lost their funding. I believe some members still work within where the anti bullying cases in an unofficial capacity. That'd be nice. I think. Can I get you anything else? I don't know if I should. I can't afford that many drinks. And besides, I don't really know how much alcohol I can handle. Yeah, we can see that. Yep, I'm going to stop here today. Thanks for the chat, Jill. Sure, no problem. Bye. Come again. Will do. Wait, you forgot your helmet. Just gone. Whoa. Gil, did the ammonia wake make you guys make you go nuts there was this time in Zanzibar when that almost happened in any case I'll go check that noise oh she woke up where am I where am I good evening and welcome to Valhalla that might have been the best thing to say Does that mean the Uncle Ingus ramblings about the afterlife looking like a shoddy downtown bar true? Called it. Afterlife? I am not dead? As far as I can tell, no. To be fair, I don't know how death or the afterlife work exactly, but you're breathing, right? Alright then, where the hell am I? How did I get here? Who brought me here? What were you planning to do with me? Are you organ traffickers, robbers, rapists, pickpockets? You're pickpockets, aren't you? Why aren't you saying anything? I'm waiting for you to vent your worries, otherwise you'll just... You're rapists, aren't you? You're rapists. The whole lot of you. You want to tear my clothes, beat me unconscious, and have your horrible way with me, and then brutally murder me, don't you? All while still violating every hole in my body as I lay twitching, don't you? Murder, 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 murder. Interrupt me. Well, this is going nowhere. Let's see if I can get a drink to calm her down or throw her up, throw at her face. Think carefully, Jill. Give her something that will calm her down. serves drinks. A, a bar? So I figured I should give you something to help you calm down. Don't worry, it's on the house. To calm down? What did you spice it up with? Roofies? TX, TTX? Pumpkins? God, no. I wouldn't even think of that. Your stuttering makes you suspicious, you know? If 
I ever add anything to, like that to your drink, they'd dock my pay and tips. Not to mention I have to pay any lawsuits myself. And that's the best case scenario. I could get fired and lose benefits or go to jail. And trust me, BTC loves to catch anyone who commits that particular felony. They'd show themselves all proud for a hefty PR boost. And the thought of going through all that is just... <sighs> Even if you say that, let's do something. If you go outside and head just three businesses to the left, you'll find a convenience store. They sell drug tests for drinks. Tell the cashier that Dana Zane sent you. <laughs> Two flying cars crashed and went boom. That's why it was so noisy. Any damage? A hole in the street. Don't know about the drivers or anything. I see. Either way, I think I'm done here. Did you check inside the toilet paper's locker? What about... Oh my god. How? What? How? I'm back. He tried to give me a bandages at first, though. Did you have to pay? No. No problem, then. Try it on the drink. It says negative. There you go. But you could be in cahoots with the clerk at the store. Even He even knew your name. Good point, but first of all, it's not my name. It's my boss's. Second, we are pretty much part of a chain. Sort of like a spicy chicken of bars. And finally, I'm not making you drink this. I offered it to you as a sign of peace. I mean, you are right. It is indeed suspicious on my part. Sorry. You can just ignore the drink, go through the door, and forget this ever happened. That would be it. You're at peace, and nothing of value would be lost. Are you implying something that won't have value because I ignored it? Are you saying my presence is so unimportant that my lack of action will yield no difference? Huh? And what about the drink? Are you going to let this fruit of your work go to waste so easily? No, I... Well, I'll let you know that I'm not that unimportant that your work does, that your work does matter. Um, I'm not sure you should drink it all so fast. So how was it? It was good, I guess. It'll help me calm down a bit, I think. Are you alright? Yeah, I guess you were t telling the truth. Sorry about that. No problem. If I were you, I'd have probably reacted the same way. I should apologize for my last comment, too. It came out as insensitive. I guess I'll stay away for a while. I need to get my thoughts in order. Can you tell me how I got here? My boss found you unconscious and brought you here for safekeeping. And you were asleep until that car crash outside. I see. I guess it's better than to wake up here then uh, on the streets, stripped of clothes, dignity, and or organs. How did you fall unconscious? Were you tired? Sick? I guess I'm sick, but I'd rather not talk about it. Of course. I'll tell you what, your drinks are on the house tonight. Why would you do that? Consider an apology on behalf of everyone here for all the trouble we've caused you. Also, something tells me you might need another drink right now. Yeah, you might be right. Um, okay then, I'll take you up on your offer. I'll have a piano man. Will you be fine? Yeah, I just gulped the last one, so I want to enjoy this one. Coming right up then. So it's for a piano man. You don't see women asking for a piano man every day. Here you go. Yeah, this is the one. My dad used to drink these before an actual pianist attempted to kill him. What did he do? Your dad. I mean, to provoke pianists like that. Wrong place, the wrong time, I guess. He was relaxing in a bar when suddenly the pianist leapt off the stage and started punching him. Some say he was off his meds and that dad looked like some music critic that had bashed him. I still hold my stance that he just got too excited. Jazz does that to you. Does it? I see. The piano man has an interesting story. It was originally created by a bartender in honor of a pianist friend of his that had recently died. Apparently it mixes all of the flavors said friend liked the most. Oh, that's nice. So this is how it feels to go for a drink at the end of a long hard day at work. 
I'm not sure if I like the fact that, that I'm falling into that. Where do you work, Miss Kim? Call me Kim. I don't know if I can say work yet, though I still just I'm still just an intern. Can I ask where? Have you heard of a newspaper called The Augmented Eye? I read it every morning, in fact. Donovan D. Dawson was here earlier. I knew I smelled his nasty cologne. That bastard leaves his reek wherever he goes. So you believe me? I do. God, you have no idea how much I hate that chauvinistic horse blower. <laughs> Harsh words. The worst part is that I kind of admire the way he does stuff. He's so forceful about the things he wants that people have to have it done before they realize what's going on. He even got a pizza delivery boy to work server maintenance. A full week passed before the pizza shop asked where the hell he was. Would you believe it? The guy became a decent server maintenance despite having no previous experience. It's kind of admirable, but at the same time, I hate his guts. Ugh. Knowing that I have to work for him, it's ugh. Why are you working there then? Did I ask something I shouldn't have? No, no. Don't fret about it. I'd rather not talk about it, though. Fair enough. What's your name, bartender? Call me Jill. Is it hard to be a bartender, Jill? Uh, I guess it's as hard as being a cook somewhere. You keep going through the motions while trying to provide something of quality, all while answering to the whimsy of people's orders. I think the hardest part is dealing with the chemical hazards some people might leave behind. Why? At one point I thought about being a bartender, but I was afraid they'd make me wear skimpy clothes and dance or something. Here we go again. Well, it depends on where you start working, you know? I guess I was lucky Valhalla didn't end up being a tacky disco overseen by a DJ with an afro. My boss just wanted a comfy place, I think. Your boss sounds like an interesting person with what with wanting to put me somewhere safe and all that. She is. She's so cool and collected, but has no qualms about showing excitement about stuff. Sure, she's been a bit tense the last couple of days, but even then, when you're with her, everything just feels under control. She also has this mechanical arm. I have no idea how she got it, but... <laughs> Sorry, I got carried away. It was fun to see you break into the wise bartender character you're using here. I do that? It'd be nice to meet this boss of yours sometime and thank her. Shall I call her? She'd be glad to know you're okay. Oh no, I shouldn't pester her that way. Besides, it's getting late and I don't want to abuse your generosity. You can ask for another one, although I don't know how much alcohol you can handle. I think I can handle another drink. One Brantini, please. Coming right up. stuff. Cheers. Ahem. Cough. Ahem. Are you alright? Yeah, just a bit dizzy. You're clearing your throat? I helps me focus a bit. Yeah, I'm better now. Hey Jill, do you work with other women? I work for a woman, but my only other co-worker is male. Why? You lucky bitch. Or I mean, you have no idea the heaven you live in. When I started my internship, every intern was female. Have you ever tried competing with women for a good spot? They are relentless. Have you tried making friends with any of them? Friends? Those cunts aren't in it for the friendship. They're in it. They're out for blood. Or, sorry, I mean... The other day I got an assignment, and all I got from my efforts was an afternoon spent locked in the bathroom. This other time, when our supervisor praised me, I'm still looking for my briefcase. Ugh, sometimes I just want to take all of those bitches and throw them in the sewers or something. Let the lizard men feast on their livers. I'm just so tired of having to deal with that. Tired of having to put up with them. Tired, tired. Hmm. No sleeping here, please. Do you want me to call you a cab? Would you be so kind? Hey, it's Jill. Can you send us a cab? The client, just a second. Hey, Kim, it's going to need your full name. 
Kimberly Lavellette. Wow, what a flowery name. Kimberly Lavellette. No, I have no idea how to spell it. No, she's too sleepy to answer that. Okay, fine. Thanks a lot. They'll be here in Zzz. a minute. She's been through a lot today, I guess. Hey, chill. Bathroom's done. I'm leaving. Go ahead and miss Lavellette to her cab on your way out, please. Oh, she woke up and fell asleep again. Sure, anything else? Anything for a client? Excuse me, miss. Please help me walk you to your cab. Pickpockets, blah, 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 blah. And that's it. Are we done for the night? Seems like it. Where's Gil and where's the girl that was here? Gil cleaned the bathroom and left because he stank. Kim woke up, had a couple of drinks, and left. So she's called Kim. How did she look to you? How was she? She was freaked out when she woke up, but she managed to calm down. Hmm. Are you worried about her? Wouldn't you be? I don't know. Hey boss, do you feel like calling like calling you boss is too impersonal? Hmm. No, not really. It's not like you call me that because I'm a stranger, just out of habit. No. Oh. Anyway, you're free to go after you finish washing up the glasses. Let me transfer you today's payment. Maybe I'll give Gil a small bonus for dealing with the bathroom. Total earnings, 2680 bucks. Drinks total, 2030 Mistakes, zero. Commission, 30%. Today's payment, 609 Tips, 650 Flawless service bonus, 500 Here's an extra for helping that girl calm down, 500 Today's total transfer, $2,259. Total funds, $12,840.50. Cool. We'll cut the stream short there, and we'll pick this up next time. All right, take care. Bye.